Yesterday, a similar pond prowler sold for $2,500, which left me thinking, wow, how much money do I have in my tiny boat? Because for the first time, I have added it up and I'm a little bit surprised. So today we're going to do a full cost breakdown of literally every single piece and part on my tiny boat, including the hull. Speaking of that, let's start with the hull. So I bought the Pond Prowler 2 used for $300 with some upgrades. But if you wanted to recreate everything brand new, you're going to be buying the new Pond Prowler 10, which is functionally identical. It just has a slightly different color and everything else is the same. That's going to run you about $800 brand new before tax from Bass Pro or Cabela's. There's also the exact same model called the Quest Angler, I believe in Dick's Sporting Goods. So it just kind of depends on where you go. But this is going to run you about 800 bucks. It comes with uh, all sorts of features. I've got different reviews on this, so I won't harp on it too much here. Uh, but you do have a place to mount a trolling motor on the bow with dedicated wiring inside the hole. You've got two rod holders on the hole. You've got a reinforced aluminum transom with, I think, some wood inside of it. And you can carry up to a, I think, a three, four horsepower is recommended with a 530 pound weight capacity. Uh, so it's a pretty impressive hole for a tiny little boat that comes with two swivel seats. Okay, enough about the hole. That's the boring part. Let's talk about all the little details and customizations that I've used to make this boat my own. First, we'll start with the trolling motor. Now I just made a full review and I have another comprehensive overview of the Newport Vessels kayak and NV series trolling motor. So I won't talk about it too much, but I'll tell you why I bought this one. So the trolling motor is going to be the 46 pound thrust saltwater NV series uh, running about $180. I did get mine on sale for about 130, uh, but that was on Black Friday. That was a great time to mention that at your convenience, I listed every single item I talked about in this video, including the Amazon link for you to pick it up and the price with it. I get a little kickback from Amazon when you pick up these products from my link. So I greatly appreciate you keeping this show afloat. Pun intended, baby. Anyway, it's a great trolling motor with more thrust than your standard Minn Kota freshwater troller that you'll get from Walmart. You know, the 30-pound thrust, freshwater, uh, $100 Minn Kota that's pretty cheap, and uh, there's a million of them out there. So I went with the 46-pound thrust, so that way I could fight through some rivers and some currents and some tide changes. And I chose Newport because, well, they're saltwater friendly. I've had two of them, the Kayak Series and my current NV Series, both performing great. But if you are going to get a trolling motor for this boat, do not get the Kayak Series. The shaft is too short and it'll be a bad time. All right, the battery, the brains of the operation, and a something that I wish wasn't so expensive. So my battery ran me $120, and I went with this one because it was highly rated and it was one of the cheapest options. That option being a deep cycle lead acid battery that's a 55 amp hour. Now I see a lot of people recommending a 100 amp hour minimum with their deep cycles, but you know, I was worried that this would be an issue, but it really hasn't. Uh, I have literally came back home after a full day of fishing with no less than half a battery. Plus, I've taken it out multiple days all the time on the same charge. I would love to upgrade to lithium so it's lighter and 100 amp power just so I can go farther, longer, and faster. But my 55 amp power lead acid has never let me down and I don't see myself forking out double the price or even an extra 50 bucks for 100 amp hour. I think I'm going to run this battery pretty much until it expires, till it's ran past its useful date and then get a lithium 100 amp hour if I feel like forking over the cash. And yes, the lithium is better, in my opinion, because it is far, far lighter. Now, speaking of that, let's talk about the battery box, the perfect must-have companion to any battery you put in there, including lithium, but if you put a lithium in this battery box, it'll function a little bit differently, you'll lose some features, and you can't put any other other than a 12 volt battery. It, it'll just ruin everything. Anyway, I love this battery box for many reasons, and a lot of these products have dedicated reviews on this channel, including this battery box, uh, but here's why I recommend that you get this and why I chose this box on this boat. First of all, it looks great. I really like how it looks, but that was the least of my concern. It has quick connect terminals, 
weatherproofs your battery, which is great for whenever I'm out in the saltwater conditions all the time. It has a USB charging port for speakers, lights, phones, cameras, whatever, plus an accessory port. I call it the cigarette lighter for whatever else you need to charge. It has a battery life gauge, so you can tell exactly how much time left you have on the charger, and you can charge your uh, battery directly through the box. Plus, it has a carrying handle on the bottom sides and top, which makes it a lot easier carrying it upstairs so I can plug it into my laundry room. Now let's talk about another feature that has been an absolute game changer and was something that I didn't think I needed until I got it as a gift. I can never imagine going without it. And that's gonna be my fish finder with transducer. This is the Garmin Striker 4 with the Chirp technology. It has been phenomenal. It looks great, has so many features, and is super cheap at $120. And yes, that includes the transducer. So this is really great for me because of course it has a fish finder, but also built in is a speedometer a water temp gauge, you get to see your water depth, your compass, and there's a lot more features that I haven't even started to explore yet. Not to mention being able to see the fish from inside your boat makes fishing a lot easier and more fun. Uh, so it's also nice to see my speed, so I know if I'm being bogged down in a current or a tide. Also, it has a live voltage meter that lets me know the health of my setup. For example, the other day, I realized that I was running 10 volts instead of the usual 13.3 that I usually get, and then it usually bottoms out at 12. I realized that I had 10 volts, my motor was bogging, I was only getting about two and a half miles an hour, uh, in the ocean, there was some current, so it was a little slower. But I realized, oops, I'm getting less voltage. I know something's wrong, and I probably have a loose connection. And sure enough, the connection on the actual battery terminal inside the box was loose because it didn't have the right tools of the boat ramp to re-secure it. And it started uh, melting away at one of the terminals. So it's really nice that my fish finder told me, hey, you're getting way less voltage, and there's something wrong. And that really saved my battery and saved me from another $120. And who knows what would happen to my $65 box. Water depth is also massive for me because I fish a lot of flats. And like, as you can see in some of these videos, I am in ultra shallow creeks. I'm floating in inches of water and I'll trim up the motor and go even lighter. And then once that doesn't work, I'll use my emergency paddle and go even further. Uh, so having water depth is phenomenal for me, even though I'm just gonna run it aground constantly every time I use it anyway. Uh, it's just nice to have, especially when I'm trying to fish deeper waters. Sometimes I wanna go in 20, 30, 40, 50 foot of water. Anyway, I also have an anchor drag alarm as well as a shallow water alarm that starts going off once I'm in about a foot of water. We do a lot of ultra shallow boating, like I said, so it's nice to have and, uh, you know, just trim things up, keep it going and explore. That's what I love about this boat is you can go ultra shallow. Now, clamp-on rod holders. This was an absolute must for me, uh, and I'll explain why. And the fact that they're under $40 for such a quality of life upgrade on my tiny boat uh, is well worth the expense. Now, this is an absolute must-have if you have this boat and plan on fishing with another person. Now, there's two bow-mounted, or I wouldn't say bow-mounted, two rod holders built into the bow of this boat that came from the sa uh, factory, but they have zero for the stern meaning I always have to ask my wife to stop what she is doing and secure my rod on the bow. Now, I got these clamp-ons for a few reasons. Uh, one, they're cheap and have a solid metal base. I needed the solid metal base so that way, you know, if a fish pulls on it, it's not going to rip off. I also leave them on when I trailer my boat down the highway, so I needed it to be really sturdy. But the part that actually gets wet and used is the two-way adjustable actual rod holding mechanism, and it's a very hard plastic, which is perfect for me personally because I'm in salt water constantly and I don't want it to rust and corrode and damage my rods. Also, they're super cheap. They clamp on beautifully to my stern and solve a problem for a very low price that should have been included from the factory. Now, I do have clamp-on boat lights. I don't have much footage of them because I've literally never used them. Uh, I, this was the cheapest and easiest solution I've found for navigational lights on a boat like mine. I have them for safety reasons, and they're not my favorite. They're cheap and they don't feel very solid. I never really actually have used them. I like to get in before dark so I can put my boat on the trailer, see what I'm doing, and take it to storage because my storage facilities, neither unit has lights, so I like to get it in there before sundown. So I've never used them, but it's a good, cheap way to be compliant and safe on the waters. And, you know, for 33 bucks, that's definitely the cheapest one. All right, the upgraded boat seats. Now, 
the boat seats I have, I think are an older model. I've seen them on some other boats, but I can't find them anywhere. So I just included a newer model and what I think is actually cheaper, uh, which is two boat seats that screw right onto the factory uh, uh, seat post, the seat mount that came with the Palm Prowler. Now this is actually only gonna run you about 120 bucks for two seats. Believe it or not, these came on my boat when I bought it used for only $300, which was a massive value. Trust me, they're extremely comfortable. I often actually fold them down and sit on them like a stool, and they will make fishing more comfortable for a longer period of time while making it feel like you're sitting on, uh, sitting in a little bit more of a proper bass boat. Must do upgrade, plus they look slick. Speaking of looking slick, coming in at $52 is camo boat decking. So, you know, this was the very first mod I did to my boat, and what really transformed it from a Bass Pro plastic pond hopper to a slick and functional micro skiff or mini pontoon or plastic john or whatever the hell this thing is. It's super cheap, it keeps all my gear from sliding around, and makes the boat much quieter when picking things up and setting them down. Absorbing the vibrations and scaring fish a little less, as this is a stealth fishing rig, is ideal, and that leads us right into foam flooring coming in at only $25. Now, this is an easy must for many reasons, first being cheap and looking great. I stand a lot. I'm personally a stander when I fish. My wife sits, but I like to stand. And a half inch thick piece of foam under my feet feels great and reduces feet fatigue. It also keeps the sound and vibrations inside the boat to a minimum, helping reduce spooking of fish. And it also allows the water, if there is any water coming in, because there's been many times where I'm just kind of dicking around outside the boat in the flats and I just jump back in and I bring in water or a fish or I spill a water bottle or whatever. It allows the water to pool and drain under the mats and they do not soak up any water. So it lets water freely pool in the stern, keeping everything always nice and dry under your feet. It looks great and requires literally no skills. Now the paddle holder. This was only three bucks. You can get this from Walmart or on Amazon, uh, but this is great for minimizing the gear inside your boat and keeping the paddle on the outside. Although I hate my paddle, need a new one, and have to keep my emergency paddle inside because it just doesn't fit in it great, I'll be getting a paddleboard paddle for it soon. I guess I could just steal the nice carbon fiber paddle from my paddleboard, but I like keeping my toys with the toys. Anyway, extra handles for the bow. This is only $14, folks, and this is something that you should definitely do. Luckily, when I bought mine for 300 U's, it came with a, uh, the paddle holder, it came with the seats, and it came with these extra handles for the bow. Now this is a must, 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 especially for only $14. I'm not sure how I'd load this into my truck or even trailer easily without getting my feet wet and pushing it from the factory handles on the stern. I use this to secure the boat to the trailer for launch, so it definitely holds its weight. Also, me and my wife, we've picked it up and carried it easily when we went to some more obscure places to put in a boat. And when I beach it, which is almost always whenever I take my boat out, as I always beach it and go explore on land, uh, it's, you need a place to pull it up with easily, so I definitely recommend it. Also, emergency paddle. This is a must have. Now, mine was 20 bucks. It's ugly, cheap, and I hate it, but it's very functional and is safety orange in case you need to get spotted. I usually have my iPhone and iPad, both that have great cell service anywhere I've been on the water. Plus my Garmin has emergency feature functions on it. Plus look at it. I can't get into much trouble with this thing. So it's time that I set the paddle aside for the next project and upgrade to a beautiful slick looking long shaft paddleboard paddle, probably carbon fiber like the one I already have, but dedicated for this boat. All right, finally, I have the Anchor, which is only $26. Now, I personally hate those mushroom anchors, but they aren't meant for the ocean, and they're really meant for small, calm lakes. So the one I have has like four claws, essentially. This one is super light, so carrying it, dropping it, and retrieving it takes no effort. The feet do a great job of dicking the feet do a great job of digging deep into the sand and mud where I live in Florida, and it does a great job, and I've never had my anchor drag alarm go off, not once, and not even our first time properly learning how to use an anchor in ocean currents, tides, winds, and waves, and, you know, anchoring downstream and all that stuff, uh, we've never drug anchor. It just works perfect. I mean, it doesn't take much for this little boat to stay in place, but you want an anchor, not a mushroom. So this brings our total cost, unless I missed a handful of small things, but this brings our total cost to $1,616. So the total cost for you to recreate this new is $1,600 
probably it's going to run you about 18 after taxes and shipping and all that stuff. Unless you get it on Amazon, then you should get away a little bit better, but I'm not done yet. We've got more pricey mods coming soon, including a Bimini top, upgraded all-electric outboard, anchor lock systems, and more. Stay tuned for the continuation of this boat and soon starting a whole new project while keeping this boat, my Pond Prowler, for life. I absolutely love it and I can't wait to add more to it and make more videos. Hope you enjoyed. You can find all this stuff in the link below for your convenience and I get a little kickback when you pick it up at no extra cost to you. Thanks for supporting the channel and happy boating.